Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life changing transformational conversation. Well, hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and welcome back again to another Let's Talk with R.C. Blakes. I'm so excited today about uh, just being able to share with you uh, once again. Really, really excited because Queenology is happening uh, in just about two weeks. And, whoo, my, my, just, not, just under two weeks, actually. And I'm looking forward to meeting everybody in Atlanta. It's going to be an amazing weekend. We have a lot of great things planned for you. Lisa and I look forward to just meeting you, hugging your necks, taking pictures, pouring into your lives, and just facilitating the entire weekend. It's going to be absolutely amazing, 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 amazing. Well, you know, I started this thing um, Last time we were together, we talked about, I forget the exact title, but it basically talked about, you know, allowing God to choose your mate, you know. And the Spirit of God has really been dealing with me about, um, even on this particular platform, if you follow me, you you probably know that I have two YouTube channels, that um, I have this one, which basically deals with empowerment, relationships, womanhood, manhood, and and so forth and so on. And it's been more of a more of a secular kind of approach. But then I have a second YouTube channel that is Bishop R. C. Blakes, which is my which is the channel where I do all of uh, Bible studies and Sunday services and, and those kinds of things. But the Spirit of God has been dealing with me about just facing the facts even on this platform that the outcomes you're looking for, be it in relationships, in money, in career, in business, whatever, 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 um, are not separate from your walk with God. Now, we're all at different levels, right? And we're allowed to be. You know, you may not be the most religious person. You may not even be a religious person. But at some point in your life, you have to face the fact that there's somebody bigger than you and I. A personal relationship with, with God on your own terms, on well, on his terms, but on your own level. You know, That may not necessarily be that you'll be the most um, religious or church-going person, but at some point, you got to acknowledge him. Bible says, they that come to God must believe that, that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. You got to acknowledge his presence, acknowledge his uh, in your life. When you think about relationships, when's the last time you really prayed about a relationship? I hear you talking about how the pool is, the relational pool is polluted and you don't know what's out here, R.C., and all of this kind of thing, and I kind of do know what's out here, right? But the last time I checked, and my document, again, is the Bible, um, relationships were God's idea from the book of Genesis. And God orchestrated the very first relationship. When did we ever come to this point where we started believing that we have to fabricate relationships and we have to make it happen. When did that ever happen? When did we start believing, well, as women, you know, I'm, I'm at an age where I've hit the wall, so I'm not a, I've got to get desperate now, and I've got to make something happen. God has to be central. 
So here's what we're talking about. How God prepares you for the mate you are the How God prepares you for the mate he has for you. I made a very controversial but very true statement last time. There are a lot of women who are asking God, why is my husband not yet manifested, who are not yet wives? Before God will manifest your husband, you must, by the, by the power of God, do the work to become what you need to become to manifest what you desire to manifest. So God has to prepare a man to be a husband before he will show him his wife. And God has to prepare a woman to be a wife before he will manifest her husband. When I came back to Lisa, God had prepared me to be a husband. And I came back declaring, you know, I'm ready to be a husband. I'm ready to be faithful to one woman. I'm ready to be a partner. I'm, I'm ready to share my life. I'm ready to share vision. I'm ready to support you. I'm ready to help you as much as you help me. I'm ready to do all of these things because I was prepared. So I want to just deal with this today. How does God prepare us for the mate or the mates that he might have for us? Because there won't be a revelation of your mate until there is a maturation of your heart. You have to mature. You have to be developed. You have to become what another person needs before God puts another person into um, the sphere of your life. And the first point that I jotted here. This process is, you know, really about God developing and maturing you spirit, mind, and body. Spirit, mind, and body. You're not prepared to be anybody's husband or wife until you are in the process of maturing in these three areas. Spirit, mind, and body. You just, you just, you know, going to the gym and eating right and all of these things are wonderful. Everybody should. But having, having a banging body, an empty heart, and a traumatized soul is no recipe for being a great wife or being a great spouse. So what God will do is God will begin to develop you in these three areas. See, a lot of times you're rushing, you know, you're rushing for relationships. This is why you're, you're man-making these things. And when, when, you're, when, when your relationships are man-made, you create a lot of problems. Because, you know, when you make your own relationships, there's no warranty on it. God is not obligated to fix your stuff because he's not the maker of that relationship. When you, when you buy authentic stuff from the real makers, there, there's a warranty. And when things go wrong, the, the, the maker repairs and the maker corrects. But the reason we're having these relationships that are insalvageable is because we're rushing the process. And when we should be working on ourselves, we're trying to work on getting someone else. You have to be a whole and complete individual before you will make for the kind of person that would create a dynamic partner slash couple. And so the first thing that I mentioned here, number one, is that God, how does he prepare you? He teaches you the love of of a father. And though this, uh, this point applies to men and women, I want to kind of hone in on how this really works in the life of a woman. It's very, very, very important for a woman 
to understand fully the love of a father. Now, in this book, I talk about that, the father-daughter talk. And by the way, at Queenology, my third book in this really series is this book. Then there's Queenology. The third book is entitled Training, The Training for Reigning. It's going to be released at Queenology in a couple of weeks. But in this book, we talk about you know, how important, important it is for a woman to feel the safe and the pure love of a father. And, and obviously, we're talking about natural fathers, be they biological or um, substitutes, surrogate fathers. It's very important for a woman to know what masculine love feels like when there's no sexual intent. And, and when the only, the only objective is her best interest, my God. And sometimes there, in, in some cases, there's never a biological or a physical father of any kind to provide that context. And it's then that we have to understand that natural fathers are resources, but your heavenly father is the source. And so as God prepares you for the mate he has for you, he will teach you about his love, the love of the father. He teaches you what love looks and feels like through his relationship with you. That's why I, that's why I stress uh, the importance of beginning to develop your personal relationship with 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 God, you know. And, and I, though I'm a pastor and a church leader, I clearly understand that that your relationship with God and your church activities are not one and the same. And the most important thing in this scenario is that you begin to develop your relationship with God because it's your personal and private relationship with God that's going to begin to bring correction, healing, organization to certain things uh, in your life as you embrace God as Father. And as he teaches you what the, what the love, what is going on then is that he's preparing your heart to come to a place where you are qualified to embrace a relationship with a partner. If you look in uh, Matthew chapter 22, verses 38 and 39, it reads like this. This is the first and is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. One version says, thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the first art of the day is that we got to learn to love God. Now you can practice that right there while you're sitting there in desperation for a man and, you know, giving out your phone number and buying drinks and all of this and dropping down on one knee and proposing and having men tell, you know, uh, that time should have been invested in getting to really know, learn, and love God and allow the Father to love you back. Because once the Father, once you experience the, the love of the Father, it is out of the love of the Father that he teaches you to love yourself. You can't love God without God teaching you to love you. because And then once you know that you're loved by the Father, oh my God, you talk about a self-esteem boost or a self-esteem booster. It, it fills your self-esteem to know that the Almighty really loves you. And it's something, something really unique about um, an authentic experience with God's love. You can, you can feel the warmth of God's embrace and God's presence all through and all over your being. The reason you've not felt that is because 
You've been so angry with religion that you forgot that God and your relationship with him is separate from all of the issues you have with religion. And if you can't find a, a church or an organization that suits you, you still need to retreat into the arms of the Father. And it's there that he teaches you to love yourself for you, empowers you to love yourself. And then it's out of your love for you that you're now able to love. So your first love affair needs to be with your creator. It is your love walk with God that completely fills your self-esteem and completes you. You know, like people are looking for, or women are looking for a man to complete them. I feel so incomplete, baby. Man can't complete you. Can't no woman complete you, brother. You got to find your, your wholeness and your completeness in the Father. The Bible says it is in him that we live, move, and have our being. He's the one that completes us. And so learning to love God takes the desperation out of the proposition of a relationship. Because you know what? When you learn to love God, it's amazing how the presence of God in your in your takes all of the, you know, the desperation, the desire for this and the desire for that, all of this. something about having that personal love affair with God that takes all of that desperation out of the proposition of relationships. And so now, because you're complete in him, you desire relationships not to fulfill you because you're already fulfilled in your individuality, which is locked up in him. So now you approach relationships from the position of, I desire one, but if one never happens, I'll still live an amazing life. And I'm going to enjoy every step of my single journey, right? And the Bible says in Isaiah 64 and 8, yet the Lord, he, yet you, Lord, rather, are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. You got to let God complete you. When, when, when you. when you develop your love walk with God, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to bring about a sense of wholeness and completeness in you that's going to take all of the desperation out of the dating proposition. And so when, when people are disrespectful and people don't, you know, they don't, they don't show up like they're supposed to. Your cutoff game is tight because you didn't come here in, in need of anything at, at all, really, but mutual respect. And when that's not given, you're not so desperate so as to, come on now. Now, what happens when, when, God, when God shows you the love of the Father? First thing, a father's love does for you. And remember, your natural fathers, be they good or bad, present or absent, are only resources. Your heavenly father is the source, and he's never left your side. And when you, when you open your heart, when you open your heart to your heavenly father, and you, you, you run hard after him like you run hard after men, the love of a father gives you identity. Talk about that in here. It gives you identity. God teaches you who you are. That's what fathers give us. They give us a sense of identity. You know, uh, when my daughters um, and my son even use their last name, Blake's, even the oldest daughter, she has, what they call, is it hyphenated, I think they call it, where she puts her you know, put her put a daddy's name in the middle, Blake's X Y Z. You know, um, because fathers give us a sense of identity, and there are many of you who are strong in many areas, but you don't know who you are. And when you don't know who you are, the world will misdefine you, because if the world can misdefine you, it can devalue you, and what the world 
should not have even been able to afford, they will mark you down to basement prices when you don't know the love of the Father. So the first thing God does before he, before he ate is that he gives you, he brings you through the process of experiencing the love of the Father, which gives you what? Identity. Number two, or letter B, Father gives you security because you know that God meets all of your needs. You're secure. And, and when a woman is secure, she's able to sit in her essence, which is feminine. When a woman, is, when a woman does not feel secure, she has to take on a masculine uh, disposition and energy uh, longer than she should have to rest in such a thing. Or should I say struggle in such a thing? But when, 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 when the love of the Father is present, there's a sense of security that allows us to, what, rest, breathe. And then let her see confidence. Fathers breed confidence. The Father gives you a bold confidence. When you learn to embrace God as Father, you say to him now, Daddy, um, I've, I've been misfiring and messing up with these relationships and now I need you to really take over this process. I'm going to trust you. And then the first thing he's going to say is, I love you. And you're going to sense the warmth of that. Can you feel that even as I talk right now? I can sense the presence of the Father, you know, even upon me now, just providing that kind of uh, energy, ambiance, whatever, you want to call it that only that is only produced where strong, loving fathers are present. When fathers are present, there's a, a, a bold confidence, things that we would have been afraid to do. We, we attempt and we succeed at without much effort when, when the father, when the love of the father is present. And when you look at all three of these things here, uh, identity, security, confidence, all three of these things are the qualities that separates a weak woman from a powerful woman. All three of these things. Identity, a powerful woman knows who she is. Security, powerful women are secure and confident. Now, I think a good biblical illustration of this is the woman at the well Jesus meets this woman at the well, and her problem had been that she had had, um, I think, five different husbands, and the man she was with presently was not her husband. So she, she struggled with her relationships with men. That was her thing. And Jesus prophetically reveals this thing, and Jesus stands there, just he and her, and he, you know, he, he desires nothing from her, and he pours into her. And the Bible says when... They're done talking. She forgot all about the fact that she had come there to draw water. She dropped her water pots and she ran into the city, the Bible says, and she told the men, come see a man. The interesting thing about this is the thing that enslaved her, which was her dysfunctional relationships with men, she was now empowered by Jesus to even go and command men to come see a man. It was her encounter with Jesus' love from a pure place that put her in position to meet men on an equal playing, equal playing field, I suppose I'm trying to say. Now, the second thing that I listed here, the second thing that I listed, when God, how God prepares you for the mate he has for you, Number one, we said he does what? He teaches you the love of the Father. That comes through your reaching for God, hungering, desiring for God, and understanding that developing your relationship with God is a personal, private thing. The second thing that happens is once you embrace God on that level, how does he prepare you for the mate he has for you? God defines your future. God defines your future. 
what is the world clamoring for? Everybody wants to know, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Does it not make sense even that the creator of a person would be the only source to get a legitimate description of what one's purpose is? So if God can give you a purpose, it seems to me that God would have to be the one to give you an understanding or a definition of that purpose. And so before God will put a person in your life, God gives you a clear definition. He defines your future. He makes you know exactly where you're going, what he created you for, why you exist. And the purpose of this is to know where you're going so you'll know the frequency to look on. See, if you know you're going, if you know you're going to 10, you automatically know you don't even need to entertain people that are functioning on a two. Even though you may be at a four or even a three, you just know you got some more work to do, but you need to be looking and waiting, watch this, until you get into the, you know, the 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 the, the arena where your kind exists. Because there are people that are your type today that you will discover are not your kind tomorrow. And what a horrible experience that is. To, 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 to fall in love with a person on this level and then to outgrow them by leaps and bounds because they were where they would, will always be or would always be and you outgrew them when you should have been investing your time into God and into self-development, God defines your future so you can know who belongs in your life. Most of these divorces are because people tied themselves down to folk before the process was complete. And in Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I know exactly where I'm bringing you. So because I know where I'm bringing you, you desire a mate, and I desire to create or to manifest one for you. I need you to know where you're going. So you know exactly where you're supposed to be looking for a mate because your type here it is your type is the man that looks like your future while while shallow women around here talking about six feet six figures six packs and all this kind of foolish stuff the woman that is truly in tune and wise is look, she's not looking for her type, she's looking for her kind. And, 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 and your kind, your type of man is the man that looks like your future. He's, that's your kind of man, rather. Why would you shackle yourself when the Bible says, be not what, unequally yoked together? Well, what do you think that means? Don't be tied down to somebody that's not your kind. Somebody that's not going where, where you're going. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So your, your, your kind is the man that looks like your future. But you got to know what your future is before you know that you're looking at your future in your man. You know, when you look in the book of Genesis, Adam was so equipped for Eve and her future, everything needed to create Eve was already in Adam. Now, when God made Adam, God took dirt and, and formed it and squeezed it together, and then God breathed into Adam the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. 
But when it came down to Eve, the process was a little different. Go to Genesis chapter 2, because a woman especially, a woman especially, God defines your future so that you can know your kind of man because your kind of man looks like the future God showed you. Genesis 2, 21 through 23 says, And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So God had to, God formed Adam from dirt, had to breathe into him. But when God got ready for Eve, he just reached into Adam and pulled out a woman because the man that God would, would have for you is the kind of man that already has the capacity to accommodate your present version and your future version. So God defines your future so that you can know when you see your future in a man. Because a woman is not to build a man. You know, I was thinking about this. Um, the, the saying goes for men, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a man, I'm going to take, take, uh, take Lisa. Uh, I'm going to make Lisa my wife. Take Lisa as a, as a wife, you know. Um, men make wives. I'm going to make Lisa my wife. But it would be inappropriate to hear a woman say, I'm going to make Robert my husband. No, 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 no. Wives accept husbands. You know, men, men make wives and then wives accept husbands. Because the man ideally is supposed to have everything that's necessary for the woman's present and for a future. And then the woman has to be wise enough to know, okay, here's a man that I can see my future. And see, most of y'all, you out there talking this type stuff, you ain't looking no further than the honeymoon. You you just, you know, all you thinking about is sex. You, you, you've been, you know, your mind been locked in on sex so long. You know, you've been just hot, just hot, unnecessarily hot. And don't realize that ain't going to last but a couple minutes. And people, people talking about all that 45 minutes on you know, you neighbor gonna know my name and all, all that. No, none of that's gonna happen. Ain't none of that's gonna happen. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You you've been locked in on that part of it so long. You have not been wise enough to know. Okay, this is where God's bringing me, and I got three men here, and he he cute, he rich, but I see a future right here. I see I see what what God showed me is my future. I see it in this brother right here. Now, now, the brother I see my future, and he ain't as tall as that one, and he ain't as rich as this one, but I see my future right here. So as God prepares you for the mate he, he desires to bring into your life, God will reveal, God makes known to you. Are y'all with me? God makes known to you your future. Uh, let's see. Number three, what does God do? What does God do uh, as he prepares us for the mate he has for us? He, he ushers us into, this is why you got to enjoy your, your single stage because you're single for a reason. There are a lot of things that happen when, when God gets you by yourself and there's nothing and nobody to interfere with the work he desires to do in your heart. He, number three, he heals the broken places of your heart. Now, these fractures may have come from parental relationships, sibling relationships, past love affairs that, that you concocted and created on your own, and so now you have a heart full of trauma and disappointment and, and mistrust and distrust and all of this kind of thing. God desires to heal all of the broken places of your heart. Because if you don't heal your, if, if your heart is not healed first, you know what happens? You unknowingly and unconsciously enter into another person's life and you become a victimizer of them. 
because it's kind of like this when you don't when you don't process your own hurts properly it's kind of like having roaches little roaches in your house and then you pack a whole bag in that infested house and you you bring that bag to your your relatives home and now they got little roaches just breeding all over their home because you didn't deal with your issues you didn't kill your stuff in your space now you've infested some infested someone somebody else's space so god brings you brings us through a process of healing he 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 helps you process all of your trauma and all of your hurtful history before he brings you together. He does that for you. He does that for the other party. He helps you to process all of that stuff before he brings you together. And by the time you get together, you, you are so far along on the journey to healing that uh, you're comfortable enough to share what you've gone through so the person can get a perspective on why your personality may be as it is. But you see, when you're when you when you've not processed, you you hold that stuff because you don't trust. You hold that stuff close to the to the breast, and so now people are looking at weird reactions and weird behavior, and they don't understand where it's coming from because you're not comfortable sharing it. God will bring you along the journey of healing to a point where you've you've healed enough to be able to share it. I love what Psalm. Uh, number 34 verses 18 and 19 says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth or delivers such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Before God will manifest the person, the mate that he has for you, it is God's desire to bring forth healing to every broken place in your heart. And the reason it's it's so important for God to usher you into a healing process is because God refuses to allow your history to disrupt your future. And when you don't heal, your history leaks into your future. And the dysfunction of yesterday disturbs the destiny of tomorrow. Now, now here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. You have to let God into that area of your heart. You have to cooperate with the healing. See, the reason you, you, you keep jumping in and out of these relationships, the reason you want to another man, then another man, then another man, then another man is because you don't want to pause and really have to deal with the healing that, that is necessary for your life. Because when you heal, your language will shift. The healed version of you is not all over the social media talking about, ain't no good men out here and all these men are dogs. That's, 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 that's the language of trauma. That's the rhetoric of pain. When, when you really heal, your expectations elevate. And then let us see, when you really heal, um, your tolerance of people's humanity elevates. In other words, it's not going to it's not going to disturb your peace if you go out with somebody and you give them a shot and they prove to be foolish or human. You're able to just, you know, okay, that is what it what it is. God bless you. And that's not going to disrupt your process at all. You you you're able to be disappointed by people and put it in context. People are people. It is what it is. Next, you're not going to just throw a blanket statement out there. Oh, nobody no good. If the whole world is going to hell, nobody no good. No, 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 no. It's when you're healed. God wants you to heal because to this point, look at your life. Your history has consistently 
sabotaged your destiny. You didn't deal with that stuff and you had a good man that loved you and wanted to marry you, but you hadn't, deal, you hadn't dealt with all of your trauma. So every time that man would treat you like a queen, um, you know, love you like a queen, you couldn't, you, you, you couldn't accept that because your broken soul could not process a person, another person having more love for you than you really have for yourself. So as a consequence, your brokenness sabotaged because you never healed. You never healed because, you, you know, you couldn't tolerate the isolation. You didn't want to lock in and be alone with God and yourself. It, it was more of a fear of being alone with yourself than it even was a fear of being alone with God. You don't want to face it because God wants to have internal conversations with you that's going to cause you to uproot all of this stuff that's been buried so deep. But these are the things that have to happen if you're legitimately going to be prepared to receive the mate that God is preparing for you. Number four. Number four. God teaches you to design your life to look like the kind you need to attract. There's no sense in me sitting here talking about, if I'm single, there's no sense in me sitting here talking about, well, I want a, you know, I, I want a rich woman. I want a woman that works out every day. I want a woman that loves God. And in the meantime, my credit score is 3,000 below zero. All I do is eat fried chicken and ice cream all day long. Too big for the bed I sleep in. And don't know the last time I had a, an intimate conversation with God. How can that kind of guy think he's going to attract a woman that works out every day, is a wealthy woman, and, and, and uh, the, the other stuff I talk about? I, 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 no, when God is preparing you for the person he's preparing for you, he teaches you to design your life to look like the kind you need to attract. See, when you when you understand this, now you're able to say, "I'm not I'm not ready I'm not ready to meet the person." Now I have some work I got to work on me. I got to work on me because there are too many folk out here talking about I desire this and this is my standard, and then you look at them, they ain't even meeting their own, their own standard. I said it nice. I said it nice. I said it nice. What what more you what more you ask for me? I said it nice. You asking for the kind of man that you ain't even you ain't you ain't even trying to meet that standard. You asking for the kind of woman you ain't even trying to meet that standard. You can get out of here. The Bible says in Genesis 1:21, and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. After their kind, and every winged fowl after his what? Kind. And God saw that it was good. God pairs by kind. How do we recognize kind? First of all, visually. Second, by sound. Thirdly, by spirit. Kind. You got to look like if you can't even if you can't if you can't design your life to look like what you want to attract, do you even deserve what you say you want to attract? No is the answer. So God helps you to actualize the most presentable version of yourself to mirror what you want. To attract. Deuteronomy 22 and 10 says, Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Sometimes you can't yoke with the person that you desire to attract because you're presently disguised as an ox or you're disguised as an ass. 
you want an ox, but you're looking like, okay, they're going to say I'm cussing, so let me leave it alone. It was in the Bible, though. So you don't want your presentation to conflict with your destiny by misrepresentation. Because you need to do the work to look like the kind you, you, you desire to attract now. Like, like there are a lot of women that think, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk around here and just dress like, I, I wish I could talk like I want, but I just can't talk like I want. Hmm. You know, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wear just about nothing and think that a husband is gonna recognize me. You can't dress like no, I can't say that. You can't dress like that. And think that a man is going to recognize you as wife. You got to be a wife when your potential husband sees you. So while you're single, you're asking, where's my husband? It may be that he can't recognize you because you ain't looking like a wife. You're looking like something else. And, and if when God is preparing you for the mate he's prepared for you, God teaches you to design your life to look like the kind you need to attract. Hmm? You may not get any bites relative to husband material because you, you never go into the streets looking like a wife. You're always going in the streets dressed like your single friends you know, who are professional singles and probably will be. You know, club wear, well, that's 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 what you're running around here rocking out in. I ain't, ain't no judgment. I'm just telling you the truth. You, 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 you get a lot of activity, but it won't be like no marriage activity, if you understand what I'm saying. Because when God is preparing you for the mate he's prepared for you, he teaches you, to design your life to look like what you want to attract. You want you want to attract the husband? Design your life to look like a wife. And then number five, and, and, and finally, and I'm done. I'm going to hit this one, and I promise you I'm out. He gives you a heart to serve. Before God brings the, the person into your life that he's designed for you, he gives you a heart to serve. He gives you a heart to serve. He gives a man a heart to serve a woman. He tells a man, in fact, you got to be you got to be willing to lay your life down for this woman. That's how much I expect you to serve. Like Christ served the church, I need you to serve your woman just like that. Be willing to lay your life down. Then he says to the woman, submit to your husband. But you can't submit until you have a husband. And a husband ain't a husband until the husband serves a wife. The process always starts with the man. God made Adam, and then God said, ain't good for you to be alone, knocked him out, said, cut his side open, pulled a rib out, said, you got to make a deposit. You can't have a woman without paying a price. You got to bleed for a brother. Then God says, now, submit to your husband. If a man hadn't bled for you, if a man hadn't put his life on the line for you. Mm -mm. Now, let me give you this, and then I, I promise you I'm done. How does God do this when he's, you know, he's preparing you for the person he's prepared for you? Three things I want you to, to remember in God's process of manifesting our mates. Number one, this is the, this is the, the end of it. Now I'm done. God orchestrates the connection. Everybody's so, you know, want to know how. Where I go to meet people? Well, you go to meet people where people are. You know, go wherever people are and, and go there. But don't don't worry about, you know, how you going to put yourself on, on the trading block. Just go be yourself, be around, be, you know, be seen, be available, and then trust God to orchestrate the connection. God will do it. Especially if you truly trust it into God's hands, 
You say, now, God, I'm tired of doing this on my own. I need you to, I need you to show up and do something here. God will orchestrate the connection. If you go to Mark chapter 10, verses 8 and 9, it says, And they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. What God hath what? Joined together. God is the greatest marriage maker in history. He ain't no matchmaker. He's a marriage maker. When you trust God to orchestrate the connection, when you least expect it, you're walking around with your healthy, complete, uh, individually fulfilled self, minding your own business, and boom, you bump into somebody on the street, and here it is, 40 years later, with grandchildren and everything, God orchestrated the connection. You ain't got to be desperate. You ain't got to be going all, you ain't got to put no naked pictures online, none of that. Number two, he puts you in the same vicinity. When you invite God into this aspect of your life, when you say, now, God, I need you to create my marriage, my relationship, God will orchestrate the connection. He'll put you both in the same vicinity. He'll put you both in the same vicinity. Go to Genesis chapter 24, verses 10 through 21. And here, just to give you the back, background of this, Abram sends out his servant to go find his son Isaac a wife. Abram, Abraham, rather, sends out his servant to go find his son Isaac a wife. And this servant starts off believing God to orchestrate a connection. And if you go to Genesis 24, 10 through 21, it reads like this, taking up from the middle of the story. And the servant took 10 camels of the, of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Naor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. God, I need you to do this. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass. He's praying now. He's inviting God into this process because God is the greatest marriage maker in history. And let it come to pass that the, that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. God already knew you prepared somebody for Isaac. Let it be that when I say, you know, da 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 da, -da let us say this, and I'll know that you, you're doing something. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, he was praying, and the Bible says, before he was done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, and the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also. What did he say? God, let her give me something to drink and then let her say, I'm going to get your camel some water until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. He was amazed that God had answered him so quickly because not only will God orchestrate, but he puts the people that you need in your vicinity. 
And then thirdly, and finally, God empowers the man to respond. Ladies, you ain't got to be trying to figure out if you should shoot your shot or not. God empowers husbands respond. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Husbands respond. You know why husbands respond? Because you are what they've been praying for. And when he finds you, he can't hold his peace. What did Adam say? This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because when a man sees his wife, he opens his mouth. And so there you have it. Relative to how God prepares you for the mate, he's preparing or, or has prepared for you. I hope you've gotten something out of this today. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. Now, don't forget to go by my website, rcblakes.com, sign up for the mailing list, check out all of my online programs. Um, again, I'm excited to meet all of you in, in Atlanta for Queenology. I think registration has closed by now, but I'm looking forward to meeting the gang from all over the nation and even other parts of the world in Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be an absolute fabulous weekend with the Queens. Um, don't forget, if you need counseling of any kind, go to BetterHelp. Look in my description, rather, and there's a link for BetterHelp Counseling. If you use that link, it will afford you 10% off of the cost of their counseling. And they, in turn, will make a deposit into R.C. Blake's Ministries. Uh, don't forget to sign up, those of you, I think we, we're almost at our number for Ghana. So if you've been saying, I think I'm going to take the trip in 2025 to Ghana with R.C. and Lisa, you, you probably need to go and um, secure your spot now because last I checked we were like um, 13 away from being uh, at capacity um, yeah about 13 away so the, the queens are going the queens and some of the kings are going to Ghana with Lisa and I in 2025 back about it I'll be celebrating my 61st birthday in Ghana with the community the royal consciousness ah, is it royal consciousness all conscious nation, twenty y'all like one of those. But we'll we'll be in, we'll be in Ghana in 2025, in July of 2025. So if you want to do that, go to rcblakes.com uh, and hit the link for Ghana, and you know put your deposit down so that, so you can be with us in Ghana in 2025. Um, I'll be in New Jersey. I'll be in New Jersey. This Sunday, um, in, in, in New Jersey, this Sunday, the part of New Jersey that's close to Philadelphia, I'm going to be there with my friend and brother um, at um, his church. And I, Dr. Bishop David Evans, okay, I'm saying, who, who's, who's the friend? Dr. David Evans. I'm going to be at their church this Sunday. It's some kind of women's situation and I have a word that I'm going to be pouring into the lives of women at that amazing church this Sunday morning. I don't know exactly what time, but I'm certain that uh, Lisa put all the information in the chat. But if you're in that area, I'd love to meet you. I'll have time to take some pictures and fellowship and share with you and all of that, but I'll be in New Jersey this Sunday. Then we're heading to Atlanta and I'll see the Queen. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'll see the Queens the following weekend. Woo! And then I'm going to be in Austin, Texas. Yeah, after Queenology, I'll be in Austin, Texas. They'll put all this information in the chat. If I have some images, um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably share those as well in the community. But hey, I'd love to see you in, in any of these places or spaces. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Thanks to all of you who've sewn into our lives. Lisa and I really, really, truly love you with all of our hearts. It means the world to share this everywhere you possibly can. 
we did a little better last week. We, our numbers rebounded a little bit. Uh, hey, man, I want to get back to those big number days. We got to get back to those big numbers where this message just runs through 100,000 in three or four days. I love that. I love that because the world needs our message. Well, I love you. Uh, you are on top and you are going higher. Don't forget to stop by uh, Amazon, pick up all of my books. And um, hey, just know I love you. You're on top. You're going higher. God has more in store for you. So we will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.